Minecraft has a lot of secrets that people never knew. From secret buttons that let you do extra things in the game. Secret languages that Minecraft invented. We will be counting down some of Minecraft's rarest secrets. Starting with the secret button menu. In Snapshot 13W36A for Java Edition 1.7.2, Dinnerbone added a super secret settings button. Imagine that you open Minecraft, load up your favorite world, and happen to stumble across this super secret menu. Not knowing what the heck it is, you would click it. But beware. Clicking it would blare a random game sound with a lower pitch and change the shader of the screen. For the rest of the time until you rebooted, you'd have to play the game like this. However, these effects would not necessarily work on computers without a graphics card that supported OpenGL 2. So because of this, Mojang ended up retiring. You can still access this, but it was removed in Snapshot 15W31A for 1.9. But did you know that there are a lot of video game references in Minecraft? You've probably seen the splash text in Minecraft that says also try Terraria, but you probably didn't know that this was added because of the Wither. When the Wither was originally being created, Minecraft devs decided to create the Wither spawn similar to that of bosses in Terraria. In Terraria, spawning a box would cause a charge up, and to summon a boss in Terraria, you'd have to collect various items to craft it. So, the Minecraft devs made it so that you'd have to craft the spawn of the Wither. But, there are a few other video game references in the game as well. You've probably seen the fan-made Pokemon game Pixelmon, but did you know there's actually an official Minecraft reference made by the devs in the game? In the first generation of Pokemon, there was a chance to encounter a Pokemon that wouldn't register. This created the infamous glitch known as Missing Number 1. Mojang wanted to implement this into their game, so they decided to add a way you could do this. In the game, every item that you can craft has a set of data determined. Similar to how the enchant data works, pickaxes have its own data based on on what it can mine. As you should already know, wood pickaxes cannot mine iron ore and get drops. This is because of how Minecraft treats pickaxe data. There is a way to make a stone pickaxe mine diamond. Using the command slash give, you can give yourself a pickaxe with the ability to mine diamond by altering the NPT data of the pickaxe and adding the mineable blocks as diamond through its block ID. Because of this factor, you can slash give yourself a pickaxe that can mine blocks that aren't even in the game. For example, if I were to type slash give and my username and then type in NBT data and set the mineable blocks to a block number that doesn't exist, it will then display its NBT data as hand break missing number. And this is just like missing number one from Pokemon. However, there are things you can find in the game that aren't as hard to get. For example, in the game Age of Empires, there was a unit that could turn enemy units into its own color. Mojang slipped a variant of this into their game. If an Avoku sees a blue sheep, it will turn it into a red sheep, uttering the word Wololo. This is an exact reference to Age of Empires. To top this off, the sound used for this is specifically sourced from the 1999 title, Age of Empires 2, Age of Kings. And these are pretty cool, but some of the secrets in this video are so insane, you never would have guessed them. One of these facts is the original Minecraft textures. Minecraft's textures were the same way for many, many years. This was until Mojang decided to retexture everything in the game during the 1.14 update. This added newer, higher res textures for everything in Minecraft. And because of this, there are a lot of Easter eggs hidden in Minecraft's textures. But you wouldn't know it by just looking at it. In Minecraft's file system, there are a lot of different textures. Some of them actually have signatures from the creators, like the texture for the zombie pigment. Originally invented by Mick Lee and designed by the texture creator Zophobia, Notch added the words thanks Zophobia in the files of the zombie pigment's texture. And this is the same case for the other mobs like the Guardian. Jeb's name is in the texture for it. The only way to know this, however, is if you open your Minecraft folder and look at the textures found in the jar files. But did you know there are texture easter eggs? Almost every texture in Minecraft looks completely different, but Mojang actually reused a lot of textures. For example, when the first release of the creeper was revealed, it was shown to have a very pixelated layout, similar to the leaves. This is because it was actually the leaves texture. It was literally retextured into the creeper. Another texture that was used for repurposing was the arrow. Even though the arrow is extremely small, there are a lot of different layers of textures on it. Part of this texture was actually reused in the leash knot that's created when you tie a death to a fence, as well as banners being hidden in the shield texture. Because you can craft banners into shields, there's always a default banner texture hidden in the base shield. And the stripe, which was added in 1.10, wears a cloak. This cloak was actually created by using the chainmail texture as a base. Because of this, the cloak file actually still has the chainmail parts drawn in on parts that aren't utilized by the game. Another secret that not many people know is that Mojang created a way to spawn mobs that can't be obtained normally. During October 31st, mobs have a chance to spawn with pumpkins on their heads. Because of how spawns can work, these mobs can be extremely rare. There is a mob so rare that the chance of spawning it is 1 in 783 trillion. This isn't even to account for the fact that it needs to spawn on October 31st, as well as many other mobs that can spawn with pumpkins on their head. If you capture these mobs, you can get some unique and rare mobs for your world. But did you know on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, Mojang added a more advanced way to build in creative mode because there were a lot of players asking for better ways to build there was actually a way to build that wasn't added in other versions whether it involves altering the terrain introducing structures or tweaking game rules bedrock edition introduced an exciting addition known as editor mode this lets you completely alter everything in your world without actually having to do it in creative but this was only a small feature of the new stuff that was added years ago there was a version of minecraft released as a joke this version of minecraft was branded as minecraft 2 and featured some of the most bizarre features minecraft ever had damn man some of these features were so outlandish that they 
they were quickly removed after. Imagine mining a bunch of coal, crafting a coal block, placing it down, only for it to talk to you. Hello there. Well, that's one of the things Minecraft added. There were a few other things like redstone bugs, similar to the silverfish, and even a pink wither. But did you know there are items so rare you can't even get them anymore? For the occasional 10 years of Minecraft's release on May 17, 2019, if you crafted a cake and placed it down, the cake had a big 10 placed like candles, and the only splash text that appeared was turning 10 years old. This was reverted to the way it was before on May 20th, 2019, and is unable to be seen again ever, even if you go back to 1.14.2 pre-2 and change the time to the device, meaning this event only happened once in the history of Minecraft, and no matter how hard you try to recreate it, you'll never be able to. Unlike this feature, which lets you wear items in the game, several items when worn on the head using slash item replace have unique placements. You can wear these items like cosmetics, and it makes for some funny gear. If you use an end rod, it is placed on your head like a unicorn horn, and it's the same with the spyglass, but you lose the ability to use it, while the lightning rod sits at the side like a snorkel. What makes this even funnier is that you can wear more than just blocks and items. If you wear a fish, it kind of looks like an ear and mic piece, while banners display similar to how pillager captains wear them, or even fence gates, which are worn like glasses. And if you get bones and wear them, they are held in the mouth like a dog, while leads go around the eye like a monocle, and feathers stick up out of the back of the head. These are all cosmetics you can't obtain normally, but it's a pretty cool secret feature. But did you know, in the old legacy console edition of Minecraft Tutorial 12 to Tutorial 13 Tutorial World, there's a sandstone pyramid. In this pyramid, there are multiple floors. However, on the top floor of the sandstone pyramid, there are four blocks of gold and a block of obsidian. This is called the Tower of Pimps. Funny name. It was created by Gavin Free in the Achievement Hunter video, Let's Play Minecraft Part 2 on a rail, and has become a symbol of the group's Let's Play Minecraft series, mainly as a trophy of their competitions in their Achievement City world with an Xbox 360 edition and Java edition. Speaking of console and bedrock editions, did you know there are secret tricks you can use on bedrock? You can actually name boats too. When anvils were first introduced, it added a unique way to give names to items. However, the only way to name entities was to get a name tag, and name the entity with a custom name on the name tag. But on bedrock, if you were to name the boat and place it, because it counts as an entity, you can let it keep its name without name tags. This makes it a lot cheaper to make. And another cool secret is that you can actually use the crafting grid as inventory space. If you turn touchscreen mode on, it lets you put items in your crafting grid using the numbers on your keyboard. You don't even need a touchscreen device either. This way, you can easily add more items to your inventory. Next, you probably didn't know that there are secret languages in Minecraft. No, I'm not talking about enchanted table languages. You can change the language in your game settings, and there are multiple different joke languages. Some of these options are Pirate Speak, Lolcat, Shakespearean English, English, which is puristic English. English and I don't know what that says. Next, did you know that there was a hinted Hamill Easter egg? As you may already know, there are a lot of different Easter eggs in the game that let you do various different things. Like naming a mob dinner bone makes the mob go upside down. And that you can also get a rainbow sheep like this. There are numerous Reddit posts about it, all speculating what the camel was. Some tried adding a name tag nope. to camels and trying different names of developers and tried various other things. But so far, no one's been able to find it. And if you happen to find the camel Easter egg, you should comment it down below because you just found a rare secret. Oh, and while you're at it, make sure you subscribe. Did you know there's a feature in my Minecraft only available to one player? That player is Dead Mouse or Dead Mouse 5. But it's not the way you think. When Minecraft capes were first invented, a cape was given out to one player, and one player only for inventing the zombie pigment. However, it was later revoked because of how angry all the players were. Unfortunately, this player never got his cape back, and instead it was released publicly. At the same time, capes were released. Notch also added ears for Dead Mouse 5 or Dead Mouse. I'm just gonna call him Dead Mouse. The ears are vanity items that are worn in addition to the player's skin. With the texture contained within Dead Mouse's skin, the best part about this is that Dead Mouse cannot disable his own ears. The ears are set to show up based on his username rather than the UUID of the player, meaning that if Dead Mouse were to change his username, he would not keep his ears. Instead, someone else would probably get them. The ears were created as a translucent part of his skin, which was automatically converted into a black color. His name tag is also programmed to render 10 pixels higher to be above the ears. Imagine if we all got our own custom printed items when the capes were made. That'd be pretty nice. cool. Speaking of capes, there is a way to print secret messages onto them. If you have a cape, normally only the front, sides, and bottom are shown. But if you catch the angle right, you can see under the cape. Because of this, a lot of players decided to make secret messages hidden under their cape. For example, the translator cape has a big pink T on the other side, while the Chinese translator cape actually has the Chinese flag on it, and a player by the name of Cheap Shot with a zero has a small Japanese flag on his. These capes are already rare because they were given out as a gift for helping translate. With the special markings and various different features, these are a lot more rare. But the most rare cape of all of these is the Million Customer Cape. It was only given out to one person, and that was the one millionth player who purchased Minecraft. The cape actually 
actually has a special design on the other side too, which is honestly pretty cool. It's kind of similar to the birthday cake, which has a small star on the other side. Starting with Skulk Blocks. They give you experience when mined, and because they're so easy to find, it's a great way to get experience. This will let you pass your friends super quickly, but getting the tools to use this can be really annoying. However, by adding mending to a golden hoe and putting efficiency 5 on it, you will be able to instantly break any Skulk Block. If you add mending to the mix, you will have an unbreakable instantaneous mining tool, and a great alternative to maxed out netherite hoes. If you make a one block Skulk Farm, you can get thousands of XP an hour, making this one of the best XP farms in all of Minecraft. And just like getting experience in Minecraft can be annoying, Wither Skulls are usually hard to obtain, regardless of what enchantment you have. This makes Wither Skulls the most annoying mob to grind, but by using this sneaky trick, you can get a skull 100% of the time. All you need to do is get a trident, enchant it with channeling, and strike a creeper with it while it's raining. This will turn it into a charged creeper. Then you can bring the Wither Skeleton into the overworld and blow it up with the creeper. It sucks that you have to do this one at a time, but it's way better than doing it normally. You could even use this to spawn a lot of withers to get back at your friends. Or if that's not your style and you're good at Minecraft, try this one on for size. Lava can be extremely deadly and normally you'd never want to jump right into it. But if you don't have the water and you need to clutch, you can actually use lava. However, this takes a lot of skill, so if you can pull this one off, you're amazing. While falling in the air, you would need to place the lava at least two blocks above the ground on the side of a wall, then fall through the lava. This will negate all of your fall damage and it's a flashy and skillful way to make a getaway from anyone who might be chasing you. And just like the lava, this next skill also takes genius level Minecraft skills. When jumping off of a high ledge, there is a way to negate any fall damage without water or lava. To pull this off, hold sprint and jump off of a cliff. If you crouch right as you hit the ground, this trick will completely negate all fall damage. So if you're running from someone who's bad at Minecraft, pull this trick and you'll run away scot-free. But if you're bad at Minecraft, they'll just look at you like you're dumb. Speaking of being good at Minecraft, getting achievements in Minecraft can feel really good. But I bet you didn't know that purple achievements do more than just feel good. When you get a purple advancement, you can get about a level of experience. If you're extremely low on resources, this can make it a lot easier for you to level up your armor. After all, that one level can be the difference between your ability to enchant or not. So if you're ever near something that can give you a purple achievement, keep this in mind. Speaking of convenience, if you're ever caught without a pickaxe or blocks deep in a cave, you can use this super sneaky trick to get out easily. If you place a moss block next to a stone and bone meal the moss block, it will convert the stone block into moss, letting you break that previously hard stone with just your fist. So next time you go to the mines, bring bone meal and moss with you. It'll turn the impending hour-long travel back up to the surface into a few minutes worth of dirty work. Speaking of dirty work, if you play on Minecraft SMP and you're constantly wondering why your enemies can find your base, you can use this next trick to find theirs too and stop them from finding yours. If you hold Shift and F3 together on your keyboard, a pie chart will pop up on the bottom left side of your screen. When you do this, navigate your way through the pie chart using the numbers on your keyboard. Pressing these will display a number of blocks in your render distance. This useful little chart can show you every entity including chests in the area. So if you see enchantment tables or ender chests pop up on this chart, you can calculate where a base is. They get trick an extremely useful way to prevent people from finding your base and even letting you find someone else's base. If you are constantly having to repair your pickaxe or craft a new one, investing into a mending pickaxe can be really useful. You probably already know that it repairs itself, but how you use it is what matters. Every time you see an ore that drops experience with mine, have a stab at it. This will increase your pickaxe's durability and you can easily throw away the ores right after. You can even get a lot of experience at once by mining quartz in the nether. Just watch out for the piglin brutes. If you've ever made a trap or used TNT in structures, then you probably understand how frustrating it can be to have your TNT explosion negated by water. But but using this simple and easy trick, TNT can still explode in water. If you place TNT in water and place a sand block over it, it will explode with the same effect as a regular explosion, making this the only way to explode something under water. You can catch your friends off guard and they wouldn't be the wiser. This is because the sand block has nowhere to fall and the entities merge, allowing the TNT to explode inside of the other one. So if you use this correctly, you can prank your friends. If you're in early game and you're constantly taking fall damage, then listen to this extremely cheap and easy trick. When you first get everything you need to enchant, don't make a normal bookshelf shelf layout yet. You can easily get feather falling by placing 10 bookshelves around an enchantment table. If you place all of the bookshelves to upgrade your table to level 30, then you'll have just a mere 2.7% chance for feather fall. But by using 10 bookshelves around an enchantment table so it only goes to level 23, this makes it 34% more likely to get feather falling, as opposed to 2.7% chance. Then you can just place the bookshelves after. And if you're like me and play Minecraft enough, you already know efficiency 5 is the fastest way to mine stone. But what if I told you there was a way that's even faster? Of course, by using a haste 2 beacon, you can instant mine stone, making you mine 500% faster. Most people already know this, but to make sure you always use a beacon, you can use the wither skeleton trick from earlier and this next trick in order to maximize your efficiency. If you're having a hard time upgrading your villagers to max, by putting a villager in a boat, you can trade infinite items off of the villager. This means no more waiting for the trades to refresh. To do this, have your friend put a villager into a boat and then have your friend get into the boat with it. Trade for whatever item you want until those items are out of stock. When you trade out all of the villager's stock, have your friend log out in the boat. When they log back in, the villager's stock will be replenished and
and you can trade it again. By using this trick, you can get infinite potions or even infinitely trade sticks and pumpkins without having to wait at all. You will become rich in no time, especially if you have your own farm. Speaking of farms, farming nether wart can be extremely annoying. However, by using mushroom stew in Minecraft, there is another way to make stew that gives you special effects without having to use any potion. By using a bowl of flour and a red and brown mushroom, you can create a soup that gives you potion effects. Most people think suspicious stew is completely random, but you can make them have specific effects. So if you're ever tired of your friends stealing your potions, or you are running out of them, you can use this method to deter any potential thieves and give yourself status effects for small periods of time. For example, a dandelion soup gives you almost a full hunger bar and gives you saturation, while using an allium gives you fire resistance. Speaking of which, farming everything you need from a villager and then making the potions you need can be extremely tiring. And so if you're ever tired of traveling up and down ladders or hills to get to your villagers, you can use this trick to speed up your traveling speed to make going through these holes extremely easy. By placing kelp inside of a water stream on each block, the kelp will create water source blocks out of every single block of water, regardless of if it is a source block or not. This makes the waterfall much cheaper, and you can also create a water elevator with this by making a one block hole as high as you want and placing the kelp on each individual block. You can also put magma at the bottom to pull you down quicker. This makes it super easy to make an up elevator and a down elevator. If you're like me and you're tired of running from your friends who keep trying to kill you, you can use this one trick to completely show them who's boss. Normal TNT can explode, and you can use it to keep your friends away, but if they place water, the TNT is useless. But you can create an instant explosion by placing a rail on the ground, a TNT cart, and shooting a bow enchanted with a flame at the minecart. This will cause it to instantly explode, doing enough damage to kill a fully maxed out netherite player. They also explode when falling from a small height of blocks, and if you get fast enough at this, you can completely one-shot your friend in a matter of seconds. You can also play pranks on them by killing them with one shot without them ever knowing. However, getting everything you need to make the minecarts can be really annoying, so using this next trick, it'll be a lot easier. For a lot of minecrafters, getting fortune 3 can be extremely useful. Mining ores like iron can be really useful to make those TNT minecarts, and you can get extremely rich extremely fast by using this method. But a lot of players don't even know this trick. Fortune doesn't only work on ores. Any item drop is amplified from any block that drops items as long as it's mined with fortune 3. Fortune 3 not only works on ores, but you can use it with gravel. This guarantees that you get gravel every single time, so if you're having a hard time making arrows you can make them way easier or you can trade for them but if you ever need grass using silk touch in fortune 3 you can get drops up to seven each it's the same with sweet berries which can drop up to six and nether wart that drops up to seven as well so if you ever need a lot of nether warts to craft potions you can use this easy method however it's impossible to get a lot of blocks at once of one type using any kind of enchant in minecraft but there is a way to do it if you're a builder or just someone who likes aesthetic blocks wow. then look no further getting snow can be a little annoying sometimes but using this easy method you can infinitely produce snow to make snow blocks when putting a snow golem in a one by two hole it will infinitely produce snow, which you can then mine with an efficiency shovel. It will replenish itself in a matter of milliseconds, giving you an extremely fast snow farm. You no longer have to go find snow, and you sure as heck don't need to live in the snow biome. Speaking of blocks to make your life easier, the way Minecraft mob pathfinding works is that some mobs can't jump over certain blocks, one of them being azalea bushes. This is a perfect way to keep mobs outside of your house, and it's as simple as creating a perimeter around your base. This will make your house mob free, and combining this with torches makes it completely impossible for most mobs to get inside of the perimeter. Perimeter, and it's extremely easy to set up. Speaking of easy setups, getting chased by your friends and dying because you had to slow down to eat can be extremely annoying. This makes playing Minecraft a lot harder, and because you can't just ignore your health, you die easily. So to make it easier, make sure you're always carrying cakes, because if you are in a situation where you're running from something low on health, if you click fast enough while running, you can use an entire cake without even being hit. They're extremely easy to get, and by training with a farmer, they are one emerald. It's even easier using this trick by using the infinite villager glitch. This way, you don't even have to stop to eat, your friends continue to deplete their hunger and you can strike when they need to heal or if they stop to eat the game. Oh, and speaking of fighting with friends, you can take PvP to the next level with this weird PvP utility. If you play on an SMP, you're probably used to carrying around a lot of utilities like cobwebs, golden apples, lava, and water. And if you normally carry around a water bucket, you should visit the closest ocean near you and get a puffer fish in a bucket. That way, the next time you fight someone, you can give them poison. This does consistent damage and isn't blocked by armor. This is especially useful in netherite PvP because a full crit only does the same as poison does. So if you're tired of being beat by your friends, you can use this sneaky little item to get the advantage on your friends, and it'll make your friends think twice about fighting you. You can also combine this with cobwebs to get your friends in a sticky situation. Minecraft is no stranger to woodland mobs, and the deer could really add to this. The mob itself wouldn't add too much to the game, aside from a few droppable items like venison and antler horns. However, forests in Minecraft don't have a lot of depth to them. Some forests have things like bees and the various mobs already in Minecraft, but having deer would really spice up Minecraft's mob system, especially if paired with a new mob like 
like the boar. Similar to the pig, the boar would just be an expansion on this mob. The largest thing likely lacking in Minecraft is its array of different mobs. Minecraft simplicity is a great thing to have, but having a different variation of the same mobs that already exist would be a great addition to the game. The boar would drop raw pork chop just like the pig, but would live in the biomes like the forest. Visiting the forest with these two new mobs, deer and boar, would make the experience a lot better. While in the desert, there are mobs that already exist like the rabbit. Expanding on this mob could be extremely cool for the desert. This jumbo rabbit could function similar to how there are baby cows and large cows. Instead, you know, for rabbits. While the little rabbits give a few items, the jumbo rabbits could have a higher drop rate. This would enhance Minecraft's mob drop rates and add for a better experience. Just make sure you could come prepared to find a hyper rabbit, because this rabbit, similar to the rabbit already in the game, the hyper rabbit would be slightly faster with the new design. This could be amazing for adding depth to the existing mob system. Speaking of adding to the existing mob system, those pesky gas in the nether could be extremely annoying. I mean, who in the right mind can really say they like the gas? Well, now you can. This baby gas being added gives you a lovable pet that makes the ugly normal gas pale in comparison. You could even name him. Listen, I'm not really great at naming, but watch out because these little guys can shoot smaller fireballs. This would be equivalent to owning a pet tiger in real life. Cute as a baby, but dangerous as a pet. However, unlike the baby gas, this coconut crab is always going to be cute. I mean, just look at this little guy. Adding this coconut crab to Minecraft can add a lot to aquatic life. Say you're gathering wood and you walk into one of these guys. Then you capture him, send his family away in a boat and make him work for you. Okay, maybe I shouldn't go that far, but you get my point. This mob is a really cute addition, which you can pair with a different variant of the sea turtle, the tortoise, to bring your sea life game up. The tortoise has a shell that functions like a shield. Can block one initial hit, but then the damage goes through. But I mean, why would you ever hurt the tortoise? Okay, maybe I would. The squirrel is a chunky mob that I think could really transform the way forests look. I think a good addition here would also be the acorn, giving this mob an item to harvest. That way they can bury them and they plant the trees. I think this would be a great concept, so you don't have to replant all the trees you chop down. The squirrels will do it for you, but as you're passing the squirrels, watch out for the vultures. They don't attack you, but they will find any mobs or meat laying on the ground and steal it from you. They drop feathers like chicken, but they're not as nice as chicken. You can even trap them in a bird cage for viewing. Speaking of birds, there are some crazy additions to the bird system that would really spice up the mob system. The ice biome has very few mobs. Adding vanity mobs like the penguin can make this biome feel a lot less empty. They can probably make friends with the polar bears too. Wait, hey, wait, no! Something Minecraft lacks is a lot of ambient mobs. There are a lot of large mobs in the game like cows, but of these smaller mobs in Minecraft, a lot of them are just really annoying. So adding a cool vanity mob like the lizard can add a lot to the game, like this dragonfly. If you're heading to the swamp biome to farm slimes, you could find these little guys roaming around in the swamp biome. They'd fly around and rest on lily pads, and as it turns to night, they'd go hide, making room for the fireflies, which should have been added in the previous Minecraft update, but Mojang never did. These little guys can make any night look like a night show. Something else that I think could be really cool is adding little jars and allowing you to capture them. Just don't let the slimes kill your fireflies. And speaking of slime, the new tropical slime could add a new version of the already existing slime, allowing for a more diverse, aggressive mob system. I think Minecraft has done a pretty good job of making various different mobs in the past, but like colored blocks, adding different variants of the same mob can create depth. It could be really cool to get colored slime balls too, even making them drop their own custom slime. It could double us crafting and maybe even die for different but for new mobs, alligators could be a great addition. Thankfully, this isn't Florida, because if it was, this thing would come knocking on your door at 3 a.m. But this guy could chill in the swamp biome. He'd probably be a little aggressive, but that's okay. His wife just left him. We'll cut him some slack. Yeah. I think adding some fish specific to the swamp could be cool. Just like tropical fish in the warm biomes, or salmon and cod in rivers, I think adting catfish to murky water in rivers can be a great idea. Just be careful when you're fishing. These things, uh, yeah. Lastly, adding a new variant of the witch could be pretty cool. This one's a little annoying, but the idea is to give the witch a stronger version. She throws liquid nitrogen and stuff at you, so you should probably stay away. In the safari biome, there are very few mobs added to the game. Generally, the new mobs Mojang adds are very one-off, and honestly, that's kind of annoying. I think adding new safari mobs like the rhino will change the game forever. Be careful though, this thing will charge This guy would add a unique challenge to the safari. In a lot of biomes, there are things that prove as barriers of sorts. During the day, you have annoying things like water, ravines, berry bushes, cactuses, and more. I think having something you have to avoid or have a hard time getting around can add some additional challenges to the safari. If you can manage to get past these guys, you'll eventually find a mob like a zebra. I think it would be cool to have more biome specific mobs like this guy. They're pretty cool looking and you could get meat or fur off of them for crafting. I think fur off of them that lets you craft colored leather armor could be really cool. And to get that leather armor, maybe you could kill crocodiles or even elephants. Be careful though, these things are massive. Just make sure you don't let anyone see you poaching these elephants. Otherwise, these lions will make quick work of you. The elephants are their prey, so you have to deal with them. Another thing I think Minecraft is missing is the concept of hunting. Some mobs hunt other mobs naturally like wolves and skeletons, foxes and rabbits, cats and creepers. But there isn't much of a case of that in general.
general. This could add a unique concept for farms too. Instead of expensive redstone, you could capture mobs and use them for farming. It would be a lot cheaper and could add some cool concepts to a lot of modern farms. The giraffes? Holy, these things are long. But again, these just go along the lines of cool mobs to add more variety. As far as drops go, they could drop leaves or different plants since that's what they eat. But they are just cool. They might even be pretty cool to keep as pets. Of course, I'm not sure what you're going to do about that long neck. Speaking of long necks, the goose would be amazing to add. We have some birds in Minecraft, but adding geese that hunt fish could add a better format of an ecosystem. You could create amazing looking ponds and put these guys in it to create an ambient environment. You could even slip some fish in there. But overall, adding more birds to Minecraft would be cool. Like this cardinal. We have parrots, but Minecraft lacks a lot of different birds. We have bees and we have other animals, but birds are an essential part of ecosystems too. Adding a variety of bird colors similar to parrot coloring could create depth. You don't want a yellow bird? Cool. You can have this red cardinal. Don't want the red cardinal? The blue jay can be added too. This little guy is really cool. I don't recommend turning your volume up though, because these things are really annoying. Fancy chicken. It's, it's just a fancy chicken. And the Clux Room. I think mushrooms are already a great addition to Minecraft. I'm honestly surprised they haven't added a Clux Room yet. Like, the concept of mushroom animals is pretty unique. They could even live in Mushroom Islands. But these guys are just really cool. It's literally just a chicken with mushroom. But it's red. So that makes it cool. Now, we can't forget about the newer stuff Mojang has added either. The Deep Dark was an amazing addition to Minecraft. It introduced the Warden and various blocks in the Deep Dark. If you come down here for any reason, though, you'll need to be more careful. This guy is really hard to fight. But that's why I think adding more mobs that just make your life harder could be funny. The first guy is the Skulk leech. Completely harmless, right? I mean, they do minimal damage and they kind of just crawl around. Well, they make sounds. Imagine you're walking around the deep dark while sneaking and spot one of these guys. The instance they make noise, it's over. And don't worry, there's a mob for that too. <laughs> the stalker, no not that stalker, is a low level boss that has a lot of health. And it spawns leeches as it takes damage or walks around. Like, literally it can spawn hundreds of leeches. Now, you could try to kill it, you know, go mining, get netherite, make a sword and enchant it with sharpness 5, but guess what? It still takes like 20 hits. By the time you've done enough damage to kill it, you would have already spawned multiple wars. Wardens. You still get absolutely destroyed regardless by 10 wardens. But still, adding a mob like this could be really unique, and I think the Deep Dark could use some unique mobs. Just like there are skeletons for the desert, or zombies for the desert like husks and water zombies like drowned, I think adding the Shattered, which is just a skeleton turned into a warden, could be really cool. Hopefully you're really careful when you see this guy, because he's similar to the warden. Thankfully, he can't shoot supersonic beams at you, but he can still summon the warden. Just make sure you're not near a Shrieker, or the Shriekworm. Yeah, let's make the game more painful to play. By adding the Shriekworm to the game, it would add additional factors to worry about in the Deep Dark. If you're running away from another mob in the game and happen to find one of these guys, you might as well just throw the white flag up and just give up. They do a lot of damage to you, and you guessed it, they shriek. The chances of it triggering the warden are literally guaranteed at some point. But don't worry, they don't shriek naturally. No, of course not. Instead, they shriek when you hit it, meaning there's no way to kill it without summoning the warden. To make matters even worse, this thing has unnecessary amounts of health. By the time you even do enough damage to this thing for it to feel it, you'll have the entire militia after you. Of course, if your goal isn't to make the game extremely awful to play, <laughs> maybe the Skulk Center is more your speed. These guys can do a bit of damage, but they drop bones. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. But using these bones, craft different things, or just collect them. Yeah, I really don't know what these are for. Regardless, adding something like this can be amazing. It adds a new bug mob and expands on the deep dark. It even add this little guy. The Skulk Snapper's only goal is to make you hate the game, which is great, because that's what the deep dark already does. But this guy would just roam around the deep dark, munching on whatever he wants. While on the surface, a few more mobs would be cool. We already have dolphins, so I think adding sharks to the- that's not a shark. Adding the Thrasher to the game would be cool. It adds an annoying mob in the water. You already have the guardians and other various water mobs, but those aren't as common. So adding a mob that's around in the water fairly often can help solve this issue or make it worse. Or if you want to hate your life even more, you could add this giant thrasher to the game. Even worse than the thrasher, this guy takes multiple crit attacks with a fully enchanted netherite sword, even then he'll probably give you diabetes by the time you finish killing him. I just think overall, adding a new mob that adds varying difficulty to each biome can be really cool. This type of world seed is called a repeating seed, and it's so rare that it's one of roughly a dozen Minecraft seeds that actually repeat all the way to the border. In this seed, there are various different mine shafts that are all connected. If you follow them all the way to the border, you'd probably land around 30 million blocks from spawn. Some of this world is so broken that hundreds of shafts are the exact same, with the exact same loot. If you loaded up a world like this and you walk through the mine shaft, do you think you'd even notice it at first? I sure as heck wouldn't. And because this world is on 1.17, the Y levels were expanded until 1.18, meaning if you go down to bedrock and spectator mode, you'll be able to see all of it. And this seed is isn't even the start of it all. Minecraft has some of the rarest blocks and updates that people don't play anymore. One of these updates had snowy grass as a variation of grass and snow. It was first introduced as a texture that hid below any snow that was placed, regardless of type. But removing normal snow no longer lets you see this texture. However, it can be made or found by using the debug stick on a piece of grass. Of course, there isn't technically a way to get the block in your inventory, but you can use powdered snow to find it. So if you head to a snow biome, get yourself a bucket of powdered snow and spam the place button on grass with powdered snow in hand, 
will trick the game into thinking there is still powdered snow above the grass and leaves the block as a snowy grass block. In earlier versions of the game, this block was only obtainable by Enderman picking up a snow block. Updating the world to the current version and having the Enderman place the block down. Other than that, there is no other way to obtain it. However, unlike the snow block, in Minecraft there are so many different types of MLG clutches, but if you didn't know, there are MLG clutches that are so rare that the only way to manage to land one of these is to rely on a mere 4 pixels. This is possible by using a boat. Boats have a slightly larger hitbox and can be used to get into for a normal clutch, but this trick uses them differently. If you put a medium slam into a boat, it increases the hitbox. Because of this, you can land on the boat where you don't take fall damage by using the hitbox of the slime. This is because the hitbox of the slime increases the time it takes to fall. It is very, very hard to pull off, making this one of the hardest MLGs in all of Minecraft. The creator of this MLG tried it hundreds of times before he could pull it off. Do you think you could too? Not to mention, what about cloning yourself? You've probably seen someone with the same skin as you, but have you ever seen someone with the same name as you? Well, some people have. There was a way to quite literally create a second version of you. In the early stages of Minecraft, it was possible to change your Minecraft name to one that already existed. This would let you create two Minecraft accounts with the same names at the same time. However, this was fixed extremely quickly, so this doesn't work anymore, but there are still a few Minecraft accounts that have a twin with the same name. The most popular one being Smidge. Did you know that the largest ore vein possible for emerald on Java is one per vein? But there was a vein so large it broke the laws of Minecraft. How? Well, when a world is being generated, it attempts to generate emerald ores 50 times per chunk, with each individual ore only having around one. While on bedrock, it tries to generate 100 ores per chunk with up to 3 per vein. But in this world, the largest emerald vein has about 14 individual ores in it. This happened because a super vein generated on a chunk border, then another super vein generated on another chunk border right next to that one. The chance of this happening is so rare, it makes wither skulls look easy to get. And this is because there can only be a certain amount of each ore in each chunk generated in a world. This is equivalent to a vein of 70 diamonds. Have you ever seen that happen before? So if you do ever see a massive vein like this, make sure you take note because this is game breaking. And speaking of game breaking, this Minecraft seed lets you break bedrock in survival Minecraft. Kind of. Normally if you want to break bedrock, you have to collect TNT and build a glitch bedrock breaking machine, which can be extremely expensive. However, this world generated structures in a way that removes bedrock. It set a record of breaking bedrock in one generation sequence by breaking bedrock 23 times. This happens because structures like ruined portals and mine shafts take priority over the way bedrock spawns. If you're lucky, the structures will take priority in spawning and create a hole to the void. So if a structure spawns that close to bedrock, it will overlap, breaking the bedrock and creating a hole to the void. However, the chances of this happening are so low because a maximum of 128 can spawn in a single world. This doesn't even account for the chance of one spawning at bedrock level. This could be the rarest occurrence to ever happen in all of Minecraft. Speaking of the rarest occurrence in Minecraft, there was a cape given to only one player originally before capes were even made. The rarest cape in Minecraft is the Bacon Cape. It was originally given to McLee by Notch. It was given out to him because he had come up with the concept of the zombie what? pigment. Notch loved the idea so much that he invented the first personalized cape ever to be made made and gave it to Mickley, but the fans didn't like this very much. It was later removed due to many people asking for their own custom cape. Only one person has ever had this cape, but because so many people were jealous of Mickley's cape, they began harassing Notch for their own. Notch later removed the cape without notice, and a lot of people were upset about this. However, Notch did add personalized capes later on because of demand. Mickley was never given his cape back. Some people even took to Twitter and Reddit in an attempt to petition for Mojang to give Mickley his cape back. Still to this day, he hasn't received his cape back despite creating one of Minecraft's most nostalgic mobs. Rest in peace, McLean. Just like massive chunks of ore spawning in succession is rare, so is this ore, which was only added to Minecraft for one day. A lot of fans were surprised, too. This ore was originally put into the game as a new addition to Minecraft's ore system, but Mojang quickly realized that it was a bad idea. A lot of new players were complaining that it was too similar to redstone. It's also extremely similar to the emerald ore, and if you didn't already know this, the ruby ore had been removed and replaced with emerald. Originally, emerald would have been the ruby ore that we know today. It also had an item from which can be used to trade with villagers, just like Emerald. The only update where you can find these ores is the 12W21A snapshot released in Minecraft version 1.3, but as it was changed, it's nearly impossible to get the ruby. However, it is pretty easy to get protection for in Minecraft. The easiest way to get it is by re-rolling librarian villagers until you get it, but there is a way to get protection 6 in Minecraft. This enchantment is so rare, however, that it is literally impossible to get unless you are on 1.16. Because of this, the only way to get protection 6 armor is by using a skeleton horseman on that version. A lot of mobs in the game can spawn with armor. Skeleton horsemen, for example, can spawn with a lot of armor, and often have more enchants on them. And in this version, some of these mobs would spawn in with glitched armor. Because of this, you can get random enchants if they drop something. However, just like it's pretty rare for a drought to drop a trident, it's also pretty rare for these mobs to drop gear. To make matters even worse, the chances of the armor being enchanted were low, so you'd have to get lucky enough for one to spawn in with enchanted armor, and also get lucky enough
enough to drop it. The glitch armor piece that would spawn would have to have two protection 3 enchantments. It was confirmed to stack, making the armor piece have the same protection as protection 6. The only other way to get an armor piece like this is to cheat it in using a command block. Did you know that it's possible to use the same glitch while combining and crafting books? The only way to do this, however, is by playing on Minecraft 1.14. Normally, when you put a type of protection on an armor piece, Minecraft prevents you from layering an enchant of the same type on it. So if you were to add projectile protection onto a diamond chestplate, you wouldn't be able to. However, because of this bug on 1.14, you are able to completely bypass this block, letting you place multiple enchants of the same subtype onto every piece of armor you own, making you completely invincible to projectiles, kind of, reducing the amount of damage you take from fire, and even preventing complete obliteration of your health through explosion damage. This also stacked with normal protection, amplifying all of these stats. Basically, this means that you would be completely invincible for the most part. The best part about this bug is that you are able to do more than just armor. This player even made broken crossbows. The chance of this ever happening is 0.39% chance. This is even lower than the chance to get wither skulls and even lower than finding god apples. So if this ever happens to you, you should take note. And if you remember earlier when we used slimes to negate fall damage, you can do the same with the warden. It works differently from the slime because you have to rely on projectiles for it to work. But when you're falling in a cave and you happen to fall on top of a warden, you can fire an arrow at the warden to trigger its hitbox as you hit it. This will create a small delay in how Minecraft processes the hitbox. So if you land inside the hitbox during the time frame at which the hitbox is triggered, your hitbox will also merge into it. This will let you completely negate any fall damage that you take, and it's extremely cool if you can pull it off. The only downside is that it's so unknown because of just how hard it is to pull off. On the bright side, however, it's not impossible. Not all rare things in Minecraft are a good thing. We've seen this before when players discovered unbeatable seeds, but this world on 1.8.9 was the victim of a glitch that made it so that when an ocean monument spawns on top of an ocean exposed stronghold, it takes priority over the blocks and breaks the portal. Not what? only one, but all three of the strongholds were obstructed with the ocean monument, making the seed impossible to complete. In Minecraft, there are plenty of different attributes and things mobs can spawn with. Similar to how skeleton horsemen are extremely rare, and the chance of them spawning with anything is also very rare, the chance of this mob spawning is, well, I don't even know how many numbers that is, 0.790's 149 chance to spawn. It being what? so rare, it's actually possible though to get it in game without cheats. However, no one has seen one or found one. The mob is an adult zombie villager with 3 fourth diamond armor, having a specific assortment of enchantments, holding an iron sword, riding a chicken, and wearing a jack-o'-lantern on its head. And for the mob to spawn with a jack-o'-lantern, it would have had to spawn on October 31st. It won't spawn any other day. And on top of this, it has to be a leader zombie, which makes this zombie, and every other aspect we've shown so far, some of the rarest things in Minecraft. And if you like strange or rare things in Minecraft, yeah. you should subscribe and click the video on screen now. I promise we won't disappoint. See you in the next video.